Today I'm gonna to share with you how to grow a pomegranate tree from seed. Okay, to start, we're going to use a whole pomegranate. As you can see, this one is past its prime, and that's what gave me the idea to go ahead and start this video for you. To start, we're going to slice off the top end of the pomegranate. I am just scoring the flesh rather than cutting straight through. And then I'm going to pull this off and that will reveal the arrow. So we see the rotted spot over here, it's pretty gross. And that's nothing that we need to worry about because we're not gonna be eating these. We're gonna be using these to grow new plants. So I'm just gonna pop out a few of these arrows that are not all gross. And I'm gonna take a paper towel. I'm gonna to place the arrows in the paper towel, fold the paper towel over, and start to mush and rub. That's going to burst the arrows and release the seeds from the flesh part. And you can just rub the seeds free of the flesh. It'll take a bit of time, but you want to be careful with this step and make sure you remove all of the flesh. And when you've completed, you will have a clean seed such as this. Once you've cleaned all your seeds, you want to set them aside and let them dry for two days. All right, so it has been two days and our seeds are now nice and dry. And I'm going to show you two ways in which you can start your seedlings. The first way is pretty simple. It requires a dampened paper towel. And I'm just gonna go ahead and open this up because I had folded it over to dampen it. And I'm gonna place some seeds on the damp paper towel, just like so. I'm trying to make the seeds be a little bit spaced so they're right on top of each other, but this isn't all that crucial. All right, so now that I got my seeds arranged, I'm gonna fold the paper towel over on itself. And then I'm going to fold it again. And I'm making just like a little packet of seeds here. And you can see the seeds through the damp paper towel. I'm gonna go ahead and dampen the towel further. I don't want it to be sopping wet, but I want it to be well saturated. And then I'm gonna take this little packet and I'm gonna put it in a zip top bag. And I'm going to close it mostly. And then I'm just gonna blow some air in there to poof it up a little bit. And there you have your little mini greenhouse environment. I'm going to store this for 10 days in some place warmish. And I found the perfect place for us is on top of our refrigerator. So the second method is to plant these directly in soil. So I have three small containers here that I've gone ahead and filled with potting soil and I've pre-moistened the soil. It's important to pre-moisten your soil when you're planting any seeds because it's going to keep the soil nice and moist without disturbing your seeds once you've planted them. So I'm gonna use a toothpick and I'm gonna create small holes in my soil to place my seeds. In this particular uh, arrangement, I'm just gonna go ahead and place three seeds per pot. So one, two, and three. And I'm gonna go ahead and poke them in there with my toothpick. They don't have to go very deep. I just wanna make sure that they are covered with the soil. And once I poke them in there, I'm just gonna lightly tap the soil on top of them. And I'm going to take my squirt bottle again and re-moisten the soil. I find using a squirt bottle to water seedlings is perfect because it's going to add moisture to the soil without disrupting the seeds. These I'm going to place in a partially sunny area and let them germinate. Okay, so it's been roughly 10 days since we set up our sproutlings and let's see what has happened. I'm going to very carefully unfold this paper towel because I don't want to disrupt any roots that may have started. And you can see right there already, some, some roots have um, stuck through the paper towel. That's a good sign, whoa. And that is kind of a bad sign. So what I'm seeing here is there's some mold growth and that is because I didn't clean the seeds well enough. 
the other packet I've gone ahead and opened and I didn't have that situation. So this must have been the second batch that I did and I got a little lazy. So keep that in mind when you're cleaning your seeds, you wanna make sure you get as much of the flesh off of your seeds as possible. So that way it avoids mold growth. However, this really doesn't seem to have affected our sprouting. Everything has sprouted really nicely. There are a few seeds that haven't, but I can let those go for a little while, or I actually have plenty of plants here. I'm not too concerned about those few, and I'm just gonna go ahead and plant the ones that have sprouted. So I'm just going to carefully tear the paper towel, making sure I go around the seeds and the roots. Don't break anybody off. That one there was hiding from me, so I have to be, have to be extra careful. But I have managed to secure a couple plants here. I want to make sure that I just have one plant, but because I have them going through the backside, they are so close. I might just plant these two together. That's uh, hedging your bets. <laughs> so I'm going to put these aside for now. And I'm going to get my pot that I have pre-prepared. This is a mixture of potting soil and perlite, and I'm going to use one of my favorite tools, a toothpick, to scooch the dirt around so that I have a nice hole to place my sproutlings in. Now you can tell that this soil is compacting nicely because I pre-moistened it, and I found that to be very helpful when planting delicate things like these sproutlings. I managed to separate my two plants, which I'm pretty pleased with because I really didn't want to plant them together. And you can see if you look closely here where the root part begins and the plant part begins. So I want to make sure that all the root is in the soil and all the plant is above the soil. One good way to indicate this besides that little notch that occurred in this one is that the root will have a fuzzy texture. So anything that's fuzzy, you want to make sure that you get it down in the dirt well. All right, and then I'm going to lightly compact the dirt around my seedling like so. I'm not pushing hard. I don't want to break that tender root. And then I'm going to get my squirt bottle again and I'm going to moisten the soil around my seedling. I found that using a squirt bottle rather than using a hose or a watering can works really well when dealing with these delicate plants because you can get a good amount of moisture in there without disturbing the plant. So I'm going to go ahead and pot the rest of my seedlings as you can see here. And I'm going to let those continue to grow in our greenhouse area so that way I have diffuse light and not the harsh direct light of the Florida sun. As you can see here, this was my other sprouting technique where I used just the seeds directly into dirt. And none of them have sprouted yet, but I haven't given up hope. It does seem that using the wet paper towel and the little mini greenhouse set up is more effective on speeding up the process of sprouting your seeds. Okay, so it's been a month since we have planted our sproutlings. And as you can see, these not only have their first set of true leaves, but their second set of true leaves. So they are ready to go into the ground. If we look at this one, this sproutling has not grown its first set of true leaves. And that is showing some signs of distress. So I'm going to let it go for a while and see if it actually does go forward. But more than likely, this plant will be discarded. So after a month, these are ready to be planted in the ground. Ideally, I want to wait though until spring or even fall. So there's two planting times that I have for my pomegranate seedlings. However, we're still in the winter and it's calling for potential frost Sunday. So I'm not gonna plant this in the ground yet, but I am going to bring this up to a larger bucket size. So I'm gonna go from this size of container to this size container. So that way I have plenty of space for more root growth so that this can mature. Pomegranates are a relatively slow growing plant. So I wanna make sure that I give it as much space to try to speed that process along. You're gonna to wanna to use some high quality potting mix and I would suggest adding some perlite to that so that way we have a good amount of drainage. 
You also want to make sure that you water these regularly as they still need a good amount of moisture in their soil. So to start off, I made sure that I put enough soil in my new pot so that when I sit my old pot in there, my soil level is going to be about that level, if that made any sense. Basically, I'm filling the bottom so that way I can have my soil level match the original soil level of my first potted plant. And then I'm going to put my fingers on either side of my plant to make sure I can give it as much as support as possible without damaging that seedling. These are very fragile plants, this part. Not only the plant itself, but its roots. And so you want to show as much respect and care when replanting these. I'm going to invert my pot tap the edges to loosen the soil. I can feel it starting to slide and I'm going to very carefully remove my pot. You can see that there are some roots already that have grown all the way to the bottom of my pot. So this is a good sign that I chose a good time to replant and go to a larger size. I very carefully placed it into the center of my pot and now I'm going to fill in around the edges. Then I'm gonna tap lightly that soil in around. I wanna make sure that I don't add more height to the top soil level of my original container, as this may cause some rot around my plant. When you're ready to plant these in the ground, you wanna make sure that you select an area that receives full sun. They will thrive best in that area. The first month after planting in the ground, you wanna make sure that you water the area regularly so that way you can establish root growth. Once they've been established, they will only require deep watering ever so often, an infrequent thing. And that's because not only are they moisture tolerant, but they're also drought tolerant, making this a perfect plant for those beginning growers. Another thing that makes this perfect is that from seed to a fruiting plant only takes three years. For most fruiting plants, it takes far longer, normally in the 20 year range. So pomegranates are awesome if you want to get fruit as soon as possible. If you see leaf drop in the winter time, you may be surprised that they're one of the last plants to regrow their leaves in spring. So don't be worried about this, it's normal. One of the most common pests that affect pomegranates are the leaf-footed bugs. These are easily treated with neem oil. So as you can see, growing pomegranates from seed is easy and fun. I hope you give it a try. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time on Seed Steading.